The dedication of the new Lexington County Judicial Center marks the county's transition to the seventh building dedicated to housing the Lexington County Court. This milestone provides an opportunity to look back over the past two centuries and to look at the changes that the court has seen. I remember when Lexington had a, all the business was done in one room. The town of Lexington was run in one room. In the summertime, they had all the windows open. They would open all the windows, and they would be trying the cases. <laughs> cases up there, and I'd stand there, and I could listen, and the, I could hear them, the lawyers up there, and they were just a going and a yelling and, a, and, and, and pleading the case, you know, and it was really interesting. I could hear everything they were saying, you know. People used to come and pay their taxes there. They would drive in from the country. So everybody came to town to do their business, and it was uh, it, and business relative to taxes and, and assessments and so forth, deeds and transfers and so forth. In the early 1800s, soaring prices for cotton were providing prosperous times for farmers in South Carolina. The rich river basin lands along the Saluda and Congaree rivers provided fertile soil for the cash crop. From the very beginning, the Lexington County Courthouse has served as a focal point for the county. In 1804, the South Carolina legislature created the Lexington Judicial District with court proceedings to be held in the original county seat of Granby, located on the Congaree River. They began to plant the uh, lowlands along the rivers in cotton after the invention of the cotton gin in 1791. Granby began, uh, began to flood every year, and it became very unhealthy. And that was the main reason that they chose to move the seat of the court uh, to a more central location, the very center of the district. And that was here where Lexington is today. When the county seat was relocated from Granby in 1820, the new town of Lexington Courthouse was established at 12 Mile Creek. During this time, the local agricultural system was maturing, spurred by the flourishing city of Columbia. By 1822, the town of Granby, which had once been larger and more prosperous than Columbia, was a deserted village, largely due to frequent flooding and mosquito infestation. The new county seat was established on land that was originally part of the Corley Plantation. Barbara Granny Corley sold the land for the new courthouse to be built and soon began selling lots for the establishment of the dwellings and businesses that sprang up in the new town. She was, uh, uh, of course, the great-great-grandmother of some of our family, and just about, it, it hit just about every family in Lexington, I think just about at that time, about everybody oh, had, were closely related to Granny Corley. They bought uh, several acres of land from Granny Corley, Annie, Anna Barbara drafts Derek Corley, and uh, established the courthouse and the jail in 1819. It opened in 1820. Barbara Corley uh, sold uh, the land for the courthouse and the jail to, to the county, I think, for $200. She was the widow of Lawrence Corley. He had obtained it on a land grant from the King of England. And uh, oh, we still have the wax seal right here. This is the only thing that, that we have left. Uh, the charter had deteriorated, but the wax seal is still here. Very little is known about the second courthouse that served the people of Lexington County. Built in 1820, there is evidence that it was in use by 1822 and continued to be the county seat of justice until a handsome new two-story courthouse was opened in 1839. By mid-century, Lexington was a well-established community of businesses, schools, farms, and churches. But this quiet prosperity was soon to be shattered by the approaching civil unrest. When the Union Army under Sherman arrived in Lexington during the final months of the war, a swath of destruction lay behind it. Between Savannah and Columbia, many courthouses, churches, and homes of staunch Confederates had been put to the fire, and the Lexington County Courthouse was soon to burn as well. 
I think it was February of 1865. Uh, the family, uh, Olivia Judge Boozer, that's his picture right up there. He owned the house. Somebody knocked on the door, so Judge Boozer went to the door. And when he went to the door, there were three officers there, uh, Sherman's officers, General uh, Kilpatrick, General Slocum, and Captain Cummings. And they had, each one of them had a gun. And they said, we have uh, 6,000 soldiers encamped on the outskirts of Lexington and said, we were going to be here for uh, several days and nights and said, we have decided that we want this home. We're going to, this is our headquarters. And if anyone objects, they will be shot. And so at that time, uh, Judge Boozer says, well, come in. He had no choice. One of the reasons that has been given for the burning of the courthouse in the town of Lexington is the fact that uh, the Union Army had gone down toward Aiken to burn the Graniteville Mills, a branch of General Sherman's army had gone down there, and they got uh, defeated at Aiken. So when they came back up here to Lexington, they were mad because they had been defeated, and so they burned much of the town, including the Lutheran Church and most of the businesses and homes along Main Street. Two local men, Simon Peter Wingert, and Henry Adam Metz loaded the court's records in wagons in an attempt to preserve them from destruction. They went in separate directions, supposedly, according to local uh, lore. We don't know which one was caught, but one of them was caught, and the records were destroyed, and the other one was able to get away with his records. Uh, we have the deeds that go back as far as 1839, but the books before that were in the other wagon, and they were destroyed. People had to come in and reestablish their land, their, gr their deeds at the courthouse if they had copies and things. So it was a difficult time. Emerging from the devastation left by the war, the slow process of rebuilding life in Lexington began. After the burning of the third courthouse in February of 1865, Court sessions resumed in the Methodist Church. Eventually, a temporary court haphazardly constructed of hewn logs and weatherboard was completed in 1866. This fourth courthouse served the county until a handsome new two-story brick courthouse was opened in 1882. It was back in the courtroom. There were two uh, fireplaces, and there was a big stove uh, back in the seating area for the spectators. It kept it uh, reasonably warm. My father was coroner here in Lexington County for 28 years, and uh, he furnished wood to fire the furnace in that courthouse. So he and my twin brother Hamp and I, we were cut wood with a crosscut saw. He would get on one end of the crosscut saw, and we were eight and 10 years old. We'd get on the other side, and we saw uh, wagon loads of wood on two horse wagons. We'd load it up haul it up here and unload it at the back of the courthouse where the furnace was. And, uh, and, and we got $3.75 for that load of wood. And we're paid by a voucher. You didn't get paid by a check, then you got paid by a voucher. And we get your money eventually when, had, when the county had the money to pay you. They didn't have water fountains, and there was a pump out there. And the janitor brought in a, a bucket of water, had, uh, had the dipper there, had the, Everybody, if you need a drink of water, just drink it right out of the, out of the bucket. <laughs> the 1880s brought industrialization into full swing with the establishment of textile mills in Lexington, Columbia, and surrounding areas. The American Railroad crisscrossed the entire country, opening new channels of trade for farmers and merchants alike. That resulted in a lot of these small towns being developed in the county that were mainly uh, fuel and water stops for the railroad. Lexington's one of the few towns that never grew toward the railroad, however, the town of Lexington. Uh, they established a, a little community out next to the railroad that we've always called the depot. And it was quite a situation to have to haul the freight back and forth out to the railroad station. But the town of Lexington always stayed right along Main Street. So the original name, Lexington Courthouse, was changed to Lexington. The news media was flourishing, and a variety of newspapers kept citizens informed about local and national events. 
the old brick courthouse, the fifth, saw one of the most widely publicized trials in the history of Lexington County, the 1903 trial of South Carolina's Lieutenant Governor James H. Tillman for the murder of N.G. Gonzalez in front of the state capitol steps in Columbia. The Gonzalez family began the state paper, and they say it was to combat Tillmanism. Tillman thought that Gonzalez had just ruined any chance he had of higher political office. Gonzalez had the pen, you know, he could he could say what he wanted to. He was found not guilty. That people saw him, I and mean, he had witnesses, but he escaped the hangman's noose on that occasion. James Tillman was haunted for all of his years, so in a way he he did pay the price because he never was a free man after that, and um, so he he never was free again, in his own mind, if, if nothing else. In 1927, the eyes of the world were on Lexington as the Saluda Hydroelectric Project began. Considered the greatest engineering triumph of its time, the project included the construction of the Lake Murray Dam. It was started in the midst of the Depression when it was completed, which was in September of 1930, it was the largest artificial uh, water reservoir in the United States, 50,000 acres. It was also the longest earthen dam in the United States. It was quite a feat. Even with various additions to the courthouse, by the mid-1930s, it had become clear that a new facility was needed, and funding was eventually provided by the South Carolina legislature. Columbia architect J. Carroll Johnson was retained to design the new courthouse, and construction began late in 1938. I remember well, the basement was dug out with mules. It was dug out with mules. I remember very well when the plans were made for the courthouse and during the construction, we came up here frequently, and the sand from this courthouse was mined on my aunt's property, Mr. Tom Hook, who was a road contractor. He mined the sand and hauled it up here to, to, for the concrete in this courthouse. The new courthouse was dedicated on January 15, 1940. The ceremony was timed to coincide with a parade and celebrations of the 200th anniversary of the settlement of Lexington County. It was an eye-opener for, for all us country people uh, with the terrazzo floors and so on. A parade was the big thing. I'd never seen majorettes before, but they were really stepping. For its time, it was a, a very modern building, and considering the, uh, the poverty of the state at that time, it's remarkable that the county of Lexington built a nice courthouse like that. Just two years later, the Lexington Courthouse would be the site for one of the most significant trials in the state's history, the Logue Timmerman trial, which led to death sentences for Sue Logue and two co-defendants. Sue Logue became the first woman executed in South Carolina's electric chair. The murder occurred in uh, the Meeting Street community of Edgefield, where um, Wallace Logue was murdered by Davis Timmerman, and Sue vowed to seek revenge on him, and she hired uh, a man from Spartanburg, uh, Clarence Bagwell, and she enlisted her, some of her relatives, George uh, Logue and Joe Frank Logue, and um, it ended in the murder of several people, including the sheriff of Edgefield and his deputy, in a shootout at the Logue house in the Meeting Street community. But when the trial came to Lexington, Sue Logue and George Logue and Clarence Bagwell were given the death sentence. The 64 years that have passed since that day in early 1940 have brought profound changes to the world and to Lexington County. The interstate highway system brought with it new access, new industry, and new jobs. Population growth, economic efforts, and a dedication to progress brought many changes to Lexington. The new Lexington County Judicial Center reflects those changes, but it also represents continuity and the enduring importance of the Lexington County Court to the people and to the county. With the 
expanded population of the county, uh, it was a must uh, to have more courtrooms and more judges and just more accommodations to carry on justice. It's going to be a, a focal point for continued growth, and it's, it's located in, in the right place. We're entering into a new era of judicial excellence in Lexington, and everyone should be very happy and proud to be a Lexingtonian. I hadn't seen any way else I'd rather be, and so I'm pretty well uh, rooted here in Lexington County.